Hello and welcome to this new segment of CD spectroscopy and MOSBUS spectroscopy for chemistry. So far we are discussing symmetry and we have discussed the mathematical version of symmetry where we looked into the different symmetry elements and out of them 5 of them come out to be very important. They are identity operator E, rotation around an axis Cn, reflection through a plane sigma, improper acceleration Sn and reflection through a point center of inversion I. So, let me jot down those points. So, the different symmetry elements So, first is the identity operator, second is the rotation around an axis, third is reflection through a plane which you call them sigma and we have discussed that its relation with respect to the Cn or proper axis of rotation or rotational axis. It can be distinguished in 3 different versions sigma h or sigma horizontal which is a reflection plane which is perpendicular to the axis of rotation. Then we can also have sigma v's sigma vertical where the plane of reflection actually contains the rotational axis. And then there is also sigma d which is a version of sigma v, but over here they actually bisects two C2s perpendicular to that principal axis. So, these are the different reflection plane. Fourth one is the reflection through a point or as we call them inversion center and we put them as I and the last one was improper axis of rotation where we do two different operation consecutively. First there is a rotation around an axis and secondly a reflection through a plane perpendicular to that Cn we have just done. So, it is basically nothing but a sigma h. So, over here we are doing two operations together Cn followed by sigma h. So, this is nothing but S and axis. So, these are the 5 different components of symmetry elements we have found and we have also found that these 5 can be combined in different particular groups and those groups are known as the mathematical groups. And this mathematical groups that we have found can be divided in 4 broad areas. Non-rotational group where we have CS, CI and C1 point groups. Then we can have single axis rotation group. where we have Cn, Cnh, Cnv, S2n and C infinite v point group. C infinite v point group comes for a linear molecule. Then comes the dihedral group which is very much similar to the single axis rotation or Cn groups, but over here we have an additional n number of C2 perpendicular to the principal axis Cn and that is why this group becomes dn, dnh, 
d and d and d infinite h point d infinite h again is for the linear molecule the difference between c infinite v and d infinite h is whether you have a center of symmetry or not whether the linear molecule both sides are same or not if it is same it belongs to d infinite h it has a center of symmetry if it is not then it does not have a center of symmetry it belongs to c infinite v point group and the last one is the cubic group which are very highly symmetric point group and we have two of them tetrahedral and octahedral which contain 24 and 48 symmetry elements respectively. So, these are the four groups we have found that can be present in a system and all our molecules can be mostly distributed among all these particular point groups. Now, the question is how to find out this point group and over there we have learned that we can do that by particular questioning. First we start with whether this molecule is linear or not, then if it is yes, then we ask whether we have a center of symmetry or not and then if it is yes or no answer yes it is infinite h, no it is infinite v. Then we the molecule is not linear if it is a no, then the next question we ask to them whether you belong to a cubic group or not. And if the answer is yes, then we easily find out whether it is a tetrahedral or octahedral geometry. If the answer is no, the next question we ask, do you have a principal axis of rotation or not? If the answer is no, then the next question you ask, do you have a center of symmetry I? If the answer is yes, you belong to CI. If the answer is no, then the next question you ask, do you have a plane of reflection or not? If the answer is yes, then you belong to CS group. If the answer is no, you belong to CI point group sorry C1 point group. So, these are the different point groups we can find over here, but if the molecule does have a Cn, then the next question we ask do you have n number of C2 perpendicular to Cn or not. So, we are differentiating between dihedral and single axis rotation group. If the answer is yes and if the answer is no. So, let me just change this say this is no, this is yes. If the answer is no, then you ask whether they have a sigma h or not. If the answer is yes, they belong to C and h. If the answer is no, then you ask do you have a number of sigma v's or not. If the answer is yes, then it is C and v. If the answer is no, it belongs to C and point group. So, these are the different point groups we can find for single axis rotation group. In dihedral angle, all the rest remains same only it has extra number of C 2 is perpendicular to C n. If the answer is yes is belong to D and H. If the answer is no then we ask do you have n number of sigma d's or not. If the answer is yes the answer will be D and D. If the answer is no it belong to D n point group. So, you have gone through that in details last class and over here this d and d is coming because you have sigma d. So, if you have n number of C2s present uh, C n and if it is present in this molecule this sigma v's will be obviously going to bisect those C2s. So, they are actually defined as sigma d. So, you have gone through that part. Now, the question is how chirality is connected to point group. So, that is the question we would like to find the answer towards to it. So, for that we are going to define what is chirality. So, if we ask what is a chirality we say a molecule is chiral if its mirror image is not superimposable 
and indistinguishable. with the original molecule. So just imagine my hand is one of those molecules and over there if I reflect it, I get this particular hand you can see they are mirror image to each other but they are not superimposable on each other or they are not indistinguishable. So that is why these are known as the enantiomers the two mirror images and this enantiomers actually is originated because of the presence of chirality in the molecule. Chirality is again coming from a Greek term which meant handedness. So like our hand is mirror image but not superimposable or indistinguishable. So that is one of the definition. But now if I have a molecule do I always have to draw their mirror image and try to fit and fix whether it is actually its mirror image or not. So the second definition there are multiple definition of it. The second definition was there if there is a molecule you are actually seeing does not have a plane of reflection it will be chiral. So again it is does not have so whether let me just properly does not have a plane of reflection it will be chiral that means you do not want any kind of sigma present in its symmetry element. So go to the next one the other definition we found if the molecule does not have a center of symmetry. I should not say will be I should say can be it can be chiral. So no center of symmetry or center of inversion should be present and with all those things when we actually look into that we find like is there any connection between the chirality and the point obviously some of the symmetry elements coming but they are not really general one. How I can further generalize it? and connect it to point Q. So for that we go back to the first definition. First what we do we take a molecule say it is A, we take its mirror image and try to find what is the mirror image and this particular mirror image we try to find whether they are superimposable and indistinguishable. Now how we do this thing? So what first we are doing? We are taking a reflection of the molecule. So basically in our term we are doing a sigma operation and then whatever this reflection we got we try to move it around so that it can go and match with the original position. So basically after this we are rotating in all different orientation, orientation possible. So basically we are doing a CN operation because so that is what we do reflection is already done now we are just rotating it in all different orientations possible try to fit with the original system. So that means we are doing a sigma we do an a CN and because this sigma plane what we are actually doing this operation it does not have to be present in the molecule at this point we are just doing the operation that is why we can say this sigma can be any place and the mirror image we are going to take is going to be the same. A molecule is going to have a mirror image of it, it can be similar depending on wherever I put the sigma plane is. So with respect to that we find that we are doing a sigma operation and CN operation next to each other. So basically we are doing a SN operation or improper axis of rotation.
and we have discussed this earlier why this improper axis of rotation is very important because it has a direct connection to chirality. So now if I am able to do the reflection, do the rotation and find that this molecule can be indistinguishable and superimposable that means this molecule is going to have an SN axis. So that means if a molecule has a SN axis then this molecule cannot be chiral. So what in other terms I am saying that if a molecule has an SN axis it cannot be chiral that means presence of SN axis can be a crucial factor to determine whether my molecule will be chiral or not. And there are some corollaries to this factor. We have already discussed that S1 where n equal to 1 is nothing but C1 into sigma. So this is equivalent to a sigma plane and that is the corollary we are finding in number 2. That means if you have a sigma plane of reflection that means you have a S1 it cannot be chiral. So that is what is actually happening there. So if you do not have a sigma there is a possibility that molecule can be chiral. Then the next one we have also defined if a S2 is equivalent to center of symmetry. So this is also getting connected over here. If you have a S2 it means it is saying that you have a molecule which is belonging to a S2 you have a C2 and sigma you do this operation you find an another molecule which is exactly superimposable and indistinguishable to the original structure. And from there we say yes if a molecule have a center of symmetry it cannot be chiral. So a molecule cannot be chiral where it has S1, S2 or any other Sn axis of rotation. So that is where we are actually getting into. So I am again trying to make it much general a molecule cannot be chiral if the molecule possess S n axis of rotation. This S n axis of rotation means S 1 to sigma, S 2 to i and so on and so forth. So S 1 means sigma plane, S 2 means i so those are covered. The molecule cannot be chiral if the molecule have an S n axis and why S n axis because as we just said what we generally do we have a mirror image and try to fit it sigma C n. So that is basically we are doing an S n axis of rot rotation where we are doing a reflection and a rotation next to each other with that probably confirming it that we are trying to find out whether the molecule is chiral or not and that is basically we are doing an S n axis of rotation and try to find whether it is chiral or not. So that means S n axis the presence of S n axis is going to be a crucial factor. is a key factor and with which we can figure it out whether a molecule is chiral or not. Now what we can do? I can find a molecule, find out this point group and find out in that particular point group do you have an SN or not and the SN we can have S n where n is greater than 3 if S 1 that becomes actually sigma if S 2 that becomes actually center of symmetry. So this is what we actually try to find out. Now the thing is that do I really need to go through all the point groups and try to find out where do I have an S n axis or not. And if we look all the point groups that is possible in the system only two point groups actually going to give you a system where there is no SN axis present and those are CN 
and the end point group. And over here one of the extension of C1 is basically C1 where the molecule are totally asymmetric does not have any symmetry element present other than identity operator that is C1 where n equal to 1. So, if you have a CN or DN point group molecule you can say that means that does not have any SN axis of rotation where n equal to 1, 2 or 3 or greater than that and that means this molecule will be chiral in nature. So, only CN and DN point group molecules can be chiral and again C1 is a special case of CN. So, with that aspect in mind, so what we generally do to do take a molecule again find out the point group and just, just see whether they are CN or DN. If it is yes then it is actually a chiral molecule and it is not belong to CN or DN then it cannot be chiral it is going to be a achiral molecule. So, with respect to that we would like to close this particular segment of this CD spectroscopy and Mosbach spectroscopy for chemist where we define the connection between chirality and point group and what we figure it out that a molecule cannot be chiral if the molecule possesses an SN axis. And over there we bring it further and we find out that if a molecule does not belong to CN or DN point group that will be achiral. If a molecule is among the CN or DN point group then the molecule will be chiral. So, with that we would like to stop this particular segment. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you.